In Psalm 37, King David penned these wise words, Fret not yourself because of evildoers, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. We become like that which captures our gaze, our thoughts, and our heart. David tells us not to spend our lives observing evildoers, but to focus our attention on God. There is a simple reason for this. Wrongdoers will soon pass from the face of the earth and leave no trace behind of their fruitless lives. David says, look up into the face of the Lord. Trust in Him and delight in Him and enjoy the relationship with Him that He craves with you. Trusting in God is the most practical way to spend your life. It enables you to do good unto others. This, in turn, will allow you to enjoy sweet fellowship with fellow travelers who also walk by faith. This fellowship can become more precious to you than that of your own earthly family. As you delight in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. Charles Spurgeon said, Men who delight in God and desire or ask for nothing but what will please God. Hence, it is safe to give them heart launch. Their will is subdued to God's will, and now they may have what they will. Do you wish to live without regret? Do you wish to leave a legacy of love and faith? Then demonstrate trust in the Lord by submitting your will to His. Delight yourself in the Lord and enjoy the abundance of fulfilled desires He will give you. Graduates, in Scripture, James encourages us to put our faith into action. James 1, 22-25 says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. Know that it is the human condition to pretend that we are better than we really are. We tend to think that because we have read scripture and know what is right, that it makes us righteous. However, the things we do are what speak of our inner condition. You are amazing creations in Christ, but you will accomplish so much more by staying close to Him. Your success in life is absolutely tied to how well you learn to listen to God's guidance. This truth about our spiritual life carries over into your working life. Many people settle for being posers. They stand safely in the wings and wait for others to make the first bold move. Then they stand close to the work and claim the success for themselves. Choose instead to be a doer. Be diligent and master your chosen field of work. Be the ones who make those first moves and become a leader to those who will naturally follow your actions. Congratulations, graduates. Each of you has finished a 12-year trip through the wilderness of school and are about to enter the promised land of a life of college and whatever the Lord would have for you. As you go into your own promised land, I offer to you the same charge given to the children of Israel as they entered their promised land. After 49 years of wandering in the wilderness, the Lord told Joshua, the leader of the Hebrew people, to be strong and courageous. You probably remember this phrase, but I'd like to put that phrase into its original context from Joshua 1, 6 through 9. Only be strong and courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You may be asking yourself why you should be strong and courageous. This time I offer the words of Peter in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Remember, graduates, be strong and courageous. I challenge you to seek God's will in your life. Pray for wisdom and guidance every day. God will provide all your needs. Pray you will find a spouse that loves God as much as you love God. Supports God's desires for your life and compliments your God-given gifts. Be patient, be still, 
and God will prevent the perfect spouse. I was a police officer for 34 years and seen a lot of good and bad in this world. I've seen some cases where very good young people with good intentions have made poor choices. I've seen young people make one faulty or poor decision that has cost them so very much. Decisions are like a fork in the road, in which some cases are irreversible. Once you make a decision without God, you will tend to travel the wrong road, leading to more bad choices and more heartache and pain. Be careful, be cautious, be vigilant in prayer, and make your decisions wisely. Seek God's will in your life. Pray for wisdom and guidance each day, and do the will of the Lord, and you will make those decisions correctly. God will protect you. Psalms 24, 1 through 6. The earth is the Lord's, and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord, and who may stand on his holy place? He who has clean hands and pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to falsehood, and has not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him. Congratulations. I would like to first congratulate each of you. Everyone here tonight is very proud of you. While recording his book of Proverbs, King Solomon once said, To keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. I'm not sure who was the first to say the following, but you can roll your eyes if you've ever heard it. Sow a thought, you reap an act. Sow an act, and you reap a habit. Sow a habit, and you reap a character. Sow a character, and you reap a destiny. The reality is that your character, and therefore your life, are really the sum of your thoughts. Your thoughts and your character are one. A little over a hundred years ago, a man by the name of James Allen, while reflecting on the book of Proverbs, wrote the following. The vision you glorify in your mind, the ideal you enthrone in your heart, this you will build your life by, and this you will become. The circumstances of your life will certainly reveal your character. But what you allow to sit on the throne of your heart, this will determine your character and will therefore determine your life. So I encourage you, all of you, keep your heart. Guard it with all your might. Because from it flows your future, your destiny, the very springs of your life. Your graduating reminds me of Daniel and him leaving the comfort of home and traveling to Babylon. Daniel's first challenge was to either eat at the king's table with items that went against his upbringing or eat the food that he knew was best for him. Daniel and his friends proposed an alternative. Please test your servants for 10 days and let them give your servants vegetables to eat and water to drink. This offer or alternative to the world gives God an opportunity to step in and glorify himself. Many times things you may propose to a professor, employer, director, or friend may not make sense. But that is the beauty of the God we serve. God is seeking men and women who will not conform to the world, but transform it by allowing His Spirit to do the work that we could never do on our own. Daniel and his friends were examined for ten days. Their appearance was better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the king's delicacies. It did not seem logical, but Daniel created a, if we do this, then God can moment. Now don't go crazy challenging God to do things outside of His will. But like Daniel, stay true to God's Word. Our prayer is that in your future, those who know you or manage you will say as Darius said, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear the God of fill in the blank, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Graduates, you've just completed 12 years of education and are entering a new phase in life that will have new challenges, new opportunities, and new freedoms. But remember, your freedom as a Christian is not to be derived from less accountability and oversight, but your freedom is in Christ and from sin. The world out there is not your church, but it is instead your mission field. Whether working or in college, you will meet many people with belief systems significantly different from your own. Some of these people will see you as their mission field. Although they may not use Christian words to describe their proselytizing, their devotion to their ideology, and zeal for converting you to their way of thinking will be no less important to them than your Christian beliefs are to you. The world is hostile to the message of Christ, and yet, in Matthew 10:16. 
Christians are called to engage the world both intelligently, being wise as serpents, and righteously, being innocent as doves. To this end, our Lord sent his disciples into the world in groups of two. He knew that they and we would need accountability and encouragement to engage the unbelieving world. And as you go into the next phase of your life, seek to establish relationships with believers for the purpose of this accountability and encouragement. Doing so will help you preserve your good character and witness among men. Congratulations, seniors. You have done it. Graduation is here, and you do deserve to be commended. You have reached an important milestone in your lives and are poised to take the next step. Whatever path you have chosen from here comes with excitement, expectations, and anticipation, but also some uncertainty and anxiety. You will be called on to make more choices on your own for yourself, and you will have to set your own priorities. Often we feel pressure from the world around us and tend to follow the paths others have taken and we try to keep pace with the world's expectations. This can cause us to focus on the never-ending urgencies of life at the expense of what is really important, to know, love, and serve God. Micah 6.8 says, He has showed you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Jesus, when asked which was the most important commandment, said in Mark 12, verse 30 and 31, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 details for us what love looks like, and that in the end remain faith, hope, and love, the greatest of which is love. Many events, responsibilities, and people, some of whom will be teachers, will cause you to stumble and stray in the coming years. But if you make these your priorities and guiding principles, you will never fall. Blessings to you all.